Good afternoon. This uh, generally, uh, this double act that we've got this afternoon, it's trying to focus on the fabricator's point of view, but I think both of us, both Listers and M Plus, we are interested in the installers that we supply as well and how they are going to react um, <clears throat> to this change that's coming into the industry, if indeed, it, or I think we've seen it's coming, but how fast it's going to come. So we just thought uh, that we would show you a few of our thoughts and ideas on how, you th how it might affect us, other fabricators in the room and installers also. Firstly, we're going to cover the opportunities um, <clears throat> that there are. And we thought we'd start with this picture, which I think most would sort of assume is perhaps a passive house, something like that. And triple glazing seems to be more associated in the UK at the moment with this sort of build. The question is, how long is it going to be before Mr. and Mrs. Jones and the semi also expect the same standard of uh, that triple glazing? We have to remember that in Europe, it's the norm, triple glazing, that's what you get. There is very little double glazing out there. We've also seen in the, uh, in the television, the, the grand designs, uh, very often they're showing products like the Passive House, and a lot of those products are triple glazed. So there, there's an opportunity to be early in the market and uh, start selling those products. Afternoon, everyone. A um, couple of marketing maxims that have done quite well for me over, over the years. The first one is, it is better to be first in the mind than it is to be first in the marketplace. And the second one is, it's better to be first than it is to be better. Um, now, having said that, it tells me there are real opportunities for those early adopters of triple glazing, whether you're on the retail side of things or whether you're on the supply side. On the retail side, because triple glazing is perceived generally by the public as a new product, it would be relatively easier to generate more sales inquiries. And if you do become first in the mind, whether you're a major operating nationally or whether you're a, a local, uh, local retailer, um, there's an even bigger opportunity in my mind. And that is you could be seen to be rewriting the rules of the double glazing industry. It wasn't that long ago, and I think most people here would remember it, that if you wanted to buy car insurance or home insurance, you'd have to do it through a broker, no choice. Then along came Direct Line and they rewrote the rules of the insurance industry. Same way as, I mean, there are much bigger online providers of insurance now than Direct Line, but they're still first in the mind. And just as we buy any we buy any car.com came along and rewrote the rules of how you sell your car so if you are perceived nationally as a major or locally as a as a local retailer as the company who rewrote the rules for double glazing then i think the results could be quite exciting for you we'll get there are there other advantages okay we've said Really, looking at it simply, it's an easy sell, isn't it? Most people, double glazing, I'm offering you triple glazing. So, in a lot of aspects, it's an easy sell. I'm not going into the complications of that as yet. But are there any other advantages? We talk about perhaps the benefits in thermal energy saving in the home. <clears throat> are there other things that we could talk about? One of the things that someone mentioned to me straight away that they said that they were selling it on was uh, the noise reduction. I think you saw in some of the slides this morning, that isn't quite the case, is it? In fact, you can get some better performance from double glazed units rather than triple glazed. So perhaps we need to be careful on how we sell these products and what we promote along with them. Um, one thing is for sure, that they certainly will feel a lot heavier, uh, the use and operation of them. There's also the point that we made earlier that it's tried and tested technology on the continent. That's the norm and now it's coming over to the, to the UK. Perhaps one of the other things that we could uh, feature as well, which I believe is uh, an added benefit, is security. You're, again, any attempt to break in, one, the window is going to be a stiffer, better made window, if we follow the, the ways that we should be manufacturing it, but also you've got an extra pane of glass 
to get through before entering the home as a, or a burglar would uh, have that more difficulty. So there are some other areas that we can think rather than just the, the thermal benefits of it if, if it's manufactured right and uh, delivered right to the customer. Differentiation is not a bad thing. And when you're promoting something new on something that's perceived to be different, it does tend to put the buzz back into your marketing. And as a result of that, it's that which really drives the extra, extra leads. What I like about triple glazing is that it, it separates you away from the lingering public perceived connotation of nasty double glazing. And too many people still think they love to hate um, the double glazing salesman. Not everyone, thank goodness, otherwise we wouldn't be here. And we have done a pretty good job of cleaning up some of the excesses of the, of the past but bad reputations are not easy to change. To this day, if I'm on holiday, I want a quiet one, and somebody comes up to me and asks me what I do for a living, I say, I'm a double glazing salesman. And then that leaves me in peace then for the rest of the, rest of the break. And not many people have heard of a triple glazing salesman. So on the basis for the public that three panes have to be better than two, it's new, it's different, so it is going to generate leads, and not just for first time replacements, probably more so for the, for the second timers. Is there an opportunity for more margin? I would have to say that if, there's, if we're just going to change from double glazing to triple glazing and keep the same margin, why are we doing it? Okay, it might be bring a few more pounds into the uh, bank account. However, is there an opportunity to actually try and increase the margin, particularly at this beginning stage, where it's not widely available, to actually get a larger margin? I think you've already seen this morning that there's a lot more costs being added in, and it's not just about an extra pane of glass. So is there an opportunity? I would say there is an opportunity, again, for our, our trade customers and for those who sell this, this product, because it's not all, the people who are asking for triple glazing now, it's not just about performance, it's aspirations. They've seen it on grand designs that, that they, they want this product. So hopefully they'll be prepared to pay a little extra and increase margins. There's one thing as well, when the neighbor asks, what happened there? <laughs> Sorry. When the neighbor asks, oh, you've had your house double glazed, then, no, I've had it triple glazed. You know, there is the, I'm slightly better, or my property slightly better than yours aspect. Again, this is only going to work for those people who really sell the triple glazing at this time. An extra margin is important. Now, many of the past major industry initiatives have been driven by the majors, bless them, the national companies. And they normally tend to lead while the rest of us tend to follow. And a few of us are drag screaming and shouting, much in our better judgments. But the big marketing spend of the nationals will promote triple glazing extensively and good, and good for them. And good for everyone else too. Um, the local retailers, such as our own business, TK Home Improvement, um, will certainly reap some of the benefits. I mean, the nationals will drive the initial lead and the local companies will benefit from the I've got to get a second quarter, I always do that brigade. They will benefit from that. Um, as well as benefit from the apparent growing trend of consumers wanting to buy locally. And it's worth making the point that some of the larger companies, the larger local retail companies, are often perceived alongside um, the majors. Uh, they've got big visibility locally. They've got quite a commanding presence um, sometimes because of their longevity. Uh, t and 35 years and going strong. Um, I've noticed Mark from KGM in Andover in the room before. Um, that's of these, these are, that company's of the same milk, and I'm sure it applies to many more companies here today as well. So now we go on to the operational issues. And a lot have been covered this morning, but we're trying to give a viewpoint here, again, from the fabricator. So <clears throat> we're, we're receiving these uh, units in, and our listers, we receive many thousands of units uh, a week. Now, rather than, we're going to see an increase, that these units are going to be 50% heavier. You might think, well, what does that matter? Well, it, it's going to make a, a difference, not just to the cost of that unit, 
but just try and remember yourselves the last time you tried to handle a really big double glazed unit and it probably took you two of two of you to get it into position and so on now think back again if that unit was 50 percent heavier is it going to be three of you four of you we're going to have to load those off the trucks if, if we don't make the units ourselves we're going to store them they have to go back onto the trucks. They have to be manhandled off again at the other end. And the more triple glazing we do, the more of those problems that we're going to face in that. So are we going to need extra people? There's health and safety that we have to consider. Are we doing risk assessments on these things? Are you even considering, and hopefully this won't happen, is there going to be more time off work with people complaining of bad backs now because they're having to handle heavier loads on each, on each delivery that they do? So there are other considerations there. More cost, I'm afraid, as well in reinforcing. When we're making double glazed frames, we stick to our systems company's standard spec. Um, when we make triple glazed, um, when we send out triple glazed frames, they're always reinforced. Should they be fully reinforced? I don't know. But the thought of sending one of our service engineers from Northampton to Cornwall on a Friday afternoon in summer horrifies me. So I'd rather take the risk of not having a, a, a slipping or a sagging transom. Um, so we'll be reinforcing every frame. So more cost and even more weight. Okay, breakages. We all glass breaks. That's, that's what happens. This is another consideration though now. We not only have breakages, but we also have unit failures. They're still going to fail when they're triple glazed. The difference is they're going to cost an awful lot more. When you break a unit, it's going to cost an awful lot more to replace that unit. If you're a fabricator and you're storing these units, handling them, putting them on trucks, delivering, there's all those opportunities to be adding extra costs into your, um, into your business. How are you going to get that back? Again, you can't simply look at a triple glazed unit, it's just another piece of glass. There are all these added costs. One of the things it touched on as well is as a fabricator, you may say, well, we're not going to change overnight. We're only going to be doing a few triple glazed windows. The rest, is, the majority is still going to be double glazed. What about your hardware and hinges? You're going to have to stock two ranges. Because the range that you stock now for your double glazing, you're now going to have to start buying in a different uh, standard of hinge for your triple glazing. So again, you're adding cost. That's product sitting on your shelf that wasn't sitting there before. These are some of the problems that we're going to face. Some companies guarantee their sealed units for 12 months. Others do it for three years. Some do it for five years. Um, M-Plus, we guarantee our sealed units for 10 years. I believe Listers does the same, Mark. Um, having to replace sealed units now under the terms of that 10-year warranty is going to cost at least 25 quid more uh, for every unit, uh, plus the additional cost of transport, because they're a, they're a lot heavier. What vehicles are you running now? That's going to change. One way or another, you're going to have to increase the size of your vehicle or you're going to have to increase the number of vehicles. You can no longer get the same amount of units as we saw earlier on the slide in, in those vehicles. And what you have view today as a full capacity vehicle that you can just about fill to get that delivery to perhaps your trade customer, it's not going to work anymore because what you're putting on that vehicle, it's, you're going to put less be able to put less sealed units on than he requires because it's going to make the weight so much faster. So you need a bigger vehicle or you need to another little one following behind or increase your fleet. And that again, it goes with your fuel costs are going to increase. These are all the added extras that we've got to calculate if we're going to go and uh, move towards triple glazing. Uh, Mark, this is a proper, uh, proper trick. <laughs> <laughs> we were fortunate, more by uh, luck than judgment, if I'm honest, because we were not thinking about triple glazing at the time. But last year we invested in a new fleet of 19 tonne trucks plus an Arctic. So uh, fortunately we're geared up to cope with, um, with, with triple glazing with the extra weight. 
I wouldn't be that happy here today if I invested in a fleet of seven and a half ton trucks last year. I wouldn't be feeling too comfortable because triple glazing is going to come. As was mentioned again this morning, there's going to be fewer design styles or there's going to be more restrictions on the size of windows that we can offer to people as well. We are going to need new ranges of hinges and hardware to cope with that because you don't want to be going back to site to put problems right that are simply caused by not using the right hardware because of the new weights of uh, triple glazing. So it's, it's going to be a different way of fabricating and servicing. You're going to have to, we're going to have to operate uh, what we do in that area. This is also something that our customers, if we're, if we're encouraging them or they're asking for triple glazing, they're going to come to us and say, I want this window made to this size and this design, and we're going to be saying, well, if it's triple glazed, you can't have that. So there's going to be a perception with, with some, perhaps, of the retail that I thought it was a better product, but actually you're restricting what I want. So those are things to consider as well. Some of the uh, PVC systems companies have not yet invested in a fit-for-purpose triple glazing bead. Um, some of them have cobbled them together. Um, that means if you're the fabricator in that situation, then you're going to have to glaze in in the factory just to make sure that the quality is right before you stick it on the truck and deliver it. Um, so that means more labour, more costs. Now we come on to other issues. We're coming towards the end. Don't worry too much. Start crying. <laughs> One of the things is the aesthetics of the, of the window, particularly the, the, the triple glazed unit itself, there is re reduced light transmission. There's also an issue that if we are using triple glazed as the, as toughened rather, as the center plane, that we can get orange peel effects. We've, I actually know of a, a, another uh, installer up in the, in the north who has had to change a triple glazed unit three times simply because of the customer's expectations. They've got a triple glazed unit in one side of the room, a double glazed unit that they'd had fitted earlier in the other side, and they, they just wouldn't accept the fact that this triple glazed unit looked different. Now, okay, you could say, well, silly, silly man, but you know when the customer's holding up the money, very often you try and, and solve their problem for them. This, again, is going to be something that when, when we sell a triple glazed window frame at an extra premium, hopefully with extra margin, that customer is going to expect a lot more. They're not going to expect less. And if they perceive that the product that you've given them is not to the same standard that they've seen before, we could have a problem. So you need, that needs explaining so that the other benefits outweigh that. With some triple glazed units, the duplex bar in the cavity is simply too big and the unit won't accept it. Um, some glass suppliers, funny enough, including one of our own, just won't supply it to us. Um, uh, they say it's too expensive for them to gear up for it. And going back to the, uh, the cobbled beads I mentioned earlier, um, with, sus with some systems, as we saw on, the, on Mark's presentation this morning, the beads sit outboard, so you shouldn't really apply an astrical bar. You could if you really insisted, but it would look absolutely terrible. So there, there will be a reduction in, in some of the glazed options that the market currently enjoys. And just to underline that point, those beads are not too bad actually in the ones that we actually use. But as we saw this morning on a couple of slides, to try and accommodate this triple glazed unit, some of the beads are now going outside the frame. And the, the, the fact is that on the continent, the systems are so much bigger. They've been designed for triple glazing. We are trying to adapt ours. And again, you come back to this concept, you, you're trying to sell something for a lot more money, but you're going to end up giving the customer, in some cases, a much worse looking product. And that's, again, how are you going to deal with that when the customer says, you're going to have to show them the product, aren't you? But could that be a drawback to you actually selling the triple glazing? We don't want to uh, get the idea that Triple glazing is ugly. Systems will change, but how long before we get a, a good triple glazed system in the UK? Well, we heard the good news this morning. Every system will accept a 28mm triple glazing unit. 
thought, what's the point? It's pointless and it doesn't look very good too. Some systems, but not all, can accept a 36mm triple glazed unit. Um, but some of the glazing beads are not fit for purpose, so the finished appearance is not good at all. And only a few systems will accept a 44mm sealed unit. And surprise, surprise, they'll be the ones leading the promotion. Now, it's, it's no secret, as it's well inside the public domain, that not many systems companies have made any money in the last few years. And the product development costs to gear up for triple glaze profiles and beads, never mind 90 mil new systems, is horrendous. So I don't see too many of them queuing up to do that. So if you can only sell 28 mil double glazing, the rest will be denigrated. If you've got 36, the other two are rubbish. And if you've got 44, well, you're king of the hill and you'll shout about it. Which means, all in all, we could put ourselves in danger of creating some real consumer confusion in this. Another point that was mentioned this morning was about U-values. I think U-values seem to be a lot more focused on when you're talking about triple glazing, although we can still get some good performance uh, through the energy rating system. But I think we also saw that basically tweaking the double glazed units that we offer now and doing some using some of the uh, higher rated uh, glazing types that there are can approach the uh, the triple glazing standards where the the real difference maker is it's that 44 mil unit if we can get to the 44 mil unit and be able to accommodate that within a system with all the hardware then there are going to be better much better advantages that we can offer to the consumer and then that will deliver real value I had, a, I had a wander around G&K's installation depot a couple of days ago and imagined what the frames would be like if they were all, if they were all triple glazed. And it was a quite shock to the system, really. Many of the frames were certainly too big for uh, a normal team of two to, um, to install. So I think we're going to be looking at three-man teams, if not some of the time, but possibly all of the time. And you won't fit as many triple glazed frames in your normal installation vans, so there's going to be more trips back to the yard, uh, more downtime, uh, more cost. How's your bank balance? Honestly, think about it. How's your cash flow at the moment? We run a danger at this time, again, as businesses, as we get busier, cash becomes king in the business, doesn't it? Triple glazing, you know, if you think about your glass bill that you've had, well, think triple glazing, you're adding at least 50% to that if you're an IGU manufacturer. If you're, a, if you're a fabricator like ourselves and buy in units, that unit isn't going to be just at 50% more. Double, 75%. I mean, talking this morning, that the cost in those units is something like 90%. How is your bank balance and cash flow going to cope with that? Because you're going to be paying for these items, these, this new triple glazing, well before you get paid, are you going to need an overdraft to get you through that period? The other uh, point, and that's, is, is your IGU supplier or your, the person who supplies you with the glass to make, into, are they going to be willing to extend your credit by 50% next month when you decide I'm going to start doing triple glazing? Or are they going to say, well, actually, no, you're up to your credit limit, everything over, we want cash. Another pressure on your cash flow and your bank balance. So you need a friendly bank manager. Anyway, now we're all thoroughly depressed. Um, <laughs> perhaps time to talk about what is the real opportunity in, in this. And we have the real, real chance now of promoting a new, highly engineered product and then go out and sell it as a high-end upgrade and we're all going to make more money because we're going to sell it at more margin. Um, and that's what I'd love us all to be doing. But there's a danger. There's a danger with significant additional cost being levied that we start to give it away. And we've got to avoid that at any cost. And as an industry, we are already giving the impression that consumers can get triple glazing at the same price as double glazing. A national company, I'm sure we've all seen it, 
is advertising on prime time mainstream TV and they're advertising for free upgrades to triple glazing. It would be wrong of me to, to mention that company, but the next speaker is employed by that company. So, sorry, about that. <laughs> sorry about that, Chris. Now, we in this room will know that Everest will generate potloads of leads because of the free upgrade, and they'll go in the home, and because they're sharp and they know what they're doing, they will sell up and they'll make more margin. And good on them for doing it. Um, but word is getting out there, even now, that you can get triple for the same price as double glazing. And for less sharp companies, or for weak selling companies, or for weak salesmen, they already know they're going to give it away at the same price as double, and the margin goes. And then all the ups of the supply chain, the pressure will come on to absorb the additional costs, not to, not to pass them up. And that is a nightmare. Two weeks ago, I was in a pub in Manchester with a few mates, uh, none of them in the industry. One of them turned to me and said, I'm thinking about getting double glazing, can you recommend a, a local company? Another mate piped up and said, no, you don't want to be doing that. You can get triple glazing now for the same price as double. Um, just Google free upgrade to triple glazing and you'll see what I mean. It's, it's a nightmare. I read a post on DGB uh, the other week, which I thought was quite sharp. Now, I know DGB is in here because I've been following you on Twitter. And I know you're making comments on the speaker, so now I've mentioned you. Would you give me a nice mention, uh, please? Um, the post said that punters are getting cannier, and they are. And there's going to be situations where a punter will say, no, I don't want that triple glazing, I want double glazing. Now, and you'll negotiate it till we've got to the walkaway price. And then he'll say, tell you what, I've changed your mind. I'll have that free upgrade to triple glazing now, please. And he ain't going to get it. So, let's beware. There are problems associated with triple glazing, we know. There are operational issues. But as an industry over the years, we've been superb at getting over these problems and we've had many thrown at us. Whoops. I will get over the problems of me hitting the microphone as well as we will getting over the problems with triple glazing. We will do it. Um, and as an industry, we've been doing well for the last 18 months. We've been making decent money for a change. And if you don't believe that, just wander around the car park as I did at lunchtime and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> um, so this is a new product offer and it's going to catch the public imagination. So let's not miss the opportunity to make sure we're all going to make some extra margin out of it. MPLAS very kindly have uh, done a survey of a group of installers. So again, as trade fabricators, it's important for us to know what our customers are thinking out there. We've gathered today in this room because we're all interested in this triple glazing question and the debate, how it's going to develop. There's a lot of uh, people who are not here today and generally they are our installers who buy off us as fabricators who they're out there at the coal face doing the job. Well, MPLAS have done a survey asking these people what they feel uh, about the situation. So we're just going to look at that. It's a bit like family fortunes, this. We asked 200 installers, and actually 110 of them actually replied. You've got to bear in mind these are retail installers who buy in frames from a trade fabricator. Um, Left-hand column is pretty straightforward. It's the frames per week that they're buying. Frame, by the way, can be a bathroom fixed, a bathroom window, or it can be a patio door, or anything in between. Um, percentage of the national total, so between one and ten frames a week, and that's 60% of the installers nationally. Um, the replies received, and the poll replies percentage was close enough to the national total to give us, we thought, a, a fairly decent sample. Now, we're looking at all replies here. There were some big differences uh, between the 1 to 10s and the 41 pluses, as you'd imagine, um, but too detailed to go into here. So Mark and myself will be doing a joint press release in the next few weeks showing those, showing those differences. So here's one of the, the questions. Have you installed triple glaze products in the last year? 7% of the, uh, the people that we polled actually said they had. 93% had not. 
Again, you can see that as an opportunity. Are they ready to be converted or some of those into triple glazing if you can get the margin? And um, we thought it would be quite clever and go right across the market and ask them where they'd been in, installed in this triple glazing. Well, the few people that had actually done it, it was private retail. Similar to a question that was asked this morning, do you expect the demand for triple glazed products to grow significantly in the next three years? Only 20% in this survey said that yes, they would. 51% said no. Again, you've got to realize that this is from the installer's point of view. We may have a different idea. And there may be some installers, I think there are some installers in this room, so it'd be interesting to know what your thoughts are, again, perhaps at the questions at the end, as which of these... Uh, points here reflect what you think too, but only 20% only think that it's going to grow. We asked the installers where they expect demand for triple glazed products to be the greatest. And our survey said, private retail. You can read it for yourselves. Um, large scale new build development surprisingly came, uh, came last, um, but really the installers target market was the was their main so that's not a great surprise this was two questions put to them what how do you think uh, do you think that the demand for triple glazed products is going to exceed that of double glazing in the next three years and five years i think you can see from both answers it's pretty much the same uh, a big resounding uh, no there is some in, unsure there but only five and six percent think that it's going to surpass double glazing and I have to admit, from my own point of view, we're not going to see a change to triple glazing overnight. So we are going to see whether it's going to be three years and five years. Well, that's open to debate as well. And we asked them, is triple glazing a practical requirement in the UK? And the vast majority are quite dubious, sir. quite dubious about it. Um, and a few people unsure. And this was an interesting uh, question. Bear in mind, the first slide said that only 7% had actually installed triple glazing, but 53% said it was difficult to install. So, again, could it be the perceptions that I don't want to do it, I don't want to handle it, or do they know something that we don't yeah. uh, yet? But 53%, you, there's going to be a block there with certain trade installers that they perhaps just don't want to do it. So could another way forward be enhanced double glazing? And finally, we asked them which products they expected to drive growth this year. Um, number one, double glazed windows, followed by colours and foils. I don't think we'd argue that. Um, composite doors, followed by conservatories and these, these, new, these new range of hybrids that seem to be around. Bifold doors and triple glazed windows last. So we come to the summary. Um, and basically, for, for me, it's the curate's egg. Now, some of you will know what that is. Others, you can find it on Wiki, Wikipedia to find out what that is. But it's good in parts, the triple glazing uh, question. There are opportunities for us, but there are, are an awful lot of challenges. But the one thing is for sure that fabricators like Listers, like M Plus, and like some of the other fabricators in this room and outside, They'll be up for the challenge, but it's got to be done right, and it's got to be done for the right price and the right margins. But we will be there at the forefront to support our installers. Over to you, Mike. Thanks, Mark. Um, with all the uh, news about global warming being confirmed in this last few weeks, I asked a question in a, a recent press article, trade press article, that why are we selling a a product that you only need if you live in Scandinavia or the coldest parts of Europe with 50% more material, increased costs in transport, handling and labour, and then sell it for the same price as the product we've already got. Now, that was somewhat tongue-in-cheek at the, at the time. But I'm pleased today that we've addressed the opportunities. We've looked at all the concerns across the supply side in, in, in some detail. Um, and yes, 
triple glazing is going to come. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind about that. It will come in some volume. Um, as an industry, we'll get over those issues, but please, let's make sure that we all in the room reap the benefits of it. Thank you very much. Thank you.